Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Wednesday. Let's talk some mountain weather. I want to go to radar first. I mean, because it is just all about the precipitation types, very elevation dependent rain snow line. So the atmospheric river continues through today, then it will come to an end and there'll be less precipitation, but you can see the trajectory, I mean, again, like a fire hose. It's bringing in copious amounts of precip, but also very warm air, pushing these rain snow lines up to, I mean, above the, the top of a lot of these ski resorts in the Pacific Northwest. I mean, look at all of the green up here. It's mainly rain. That's what the radar is showing. I mean, unless you're above 8,000 feet up there, you're probably seeing mainly rain right now. And then you've got kind of the same issue here. Central to northern Idaho, it's it's potentially even higher than 8,000. You've got some snow showing up over the very highest peaks of Montana. But even there, you're looking at very high rain snow lines. Doing extremely well up here. I'm going to take you to Revelstoke. That's going to be my first stop. Um, the beneficiaries of this of this, uh, this rich flow up here, and you've been able to squeeze out new snow almost every single night and morning. And look at these numbers, very impressive. Um, over the last seven days, um, 92 centimeters. So that's about three feet of snow. I remember, I think it was probably three or four days ago when I was forecasting close to 40 inches. So we're extremely close to that forecast now at uh, Revelstoke. So I love seeing it. You can see the, the gnome there continues to get buried uh, up at Revelstoke. Let me take you into Colorado. Now on the other end, the southern end of this flow, and this is about three, maybe four inches of new snow at Loveland Ski Area on top of the Continental Divide. I show you Loveland because really the beneficiary of this northwest wind flow, I mean, it's so efficient in these high mountain areas on the Continental Divide in Colorado and it's colder there with teens and 20s. And so, yeah, seeing some new snow at Loveland. I want to take you over to A Basin. I mean, it is still snowing and blowing there. We had wind gusts all of yesterday, 50 to 90 miles an hour up there at some of these places. Still very windy on the Continental Divide. It's on the very southern end of this northwest wind flow. So that's what we're seeing. Let me show you the, uh, the water vapor satellite imagery. Uh, so looking down on this from our satellite, you can see the, uh, the water vapor, the whites, the blues, the greens. That's going to be the bulk of the precipitation coming in in the atmosphere. You can see the, uh, certainly the different waves moving in with this atmospheric river. Again, it'll last all the way through today. And then I think um, the thrust of this, this uh, push, this surge will probably come to an end. That takes me into the bullet points. Here's what I'm seeing in this forecast period. A lot of little nitty gritty things to talk about. The strong atmospheric river will run through today, less precip after 1210. And then the next storm system is roughly, the, the larger storm system in the flow will come around 1215. It may still rain or snow in between 1210 and 1215, but the bigger storm comes in then. The rain snow line today, like I've been alluding to, is just going to be so high, very high elevations like 8,000 to 9,000 feet, maybe even higher at times. And I point out Crystal Mountain, it's just been an unfortunate situation. I mean, some of these places can't even open. It's just all rain up and down the, uh, the spectrum of the mountain there. Crystal, Stevens Pass, dealing with this. Uh, of course, you have the higher elevations up around uh, Baker and, and also Whistler, you, you're dealing with some colder air at the higher elevations. So it, you've seen a lot of snow. Jackson Hole, 9,000 feet or higher today, Brundage way up there, eight to 9,000 foot freezing levels. It's just crazy to see that. Um, here are your best odds of snow. Colorado, very light today in the morning. That's what we're seeing right now with those strong winds. And then again, it's just a waiting game. Um, 12 17, and that's the case for Tahoe. 12 17, 12 17 for Utah and the Wasatch. I think, and, and from what I was reading up there in the in Little Cottonwood, I think the snowpack is about five feet below average. It's about five feet below where it should be for this time of the year. I, like I'm showing you here, I don't have any relief um, for quite a while. Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Interior, BC, the rich flow continues with some breaks now after we get through 1210, but um, then you've got an additional storm system coming in 1215. 
All right, let's talk about the, uh, the forecast radar here. So uh, we'll start this up at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time today, Wednesday, December 10th. Clearly the trajectory of the heaviest precip is Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, the Pacific Northwest, and British Columbia. So let me move this ahead. All right, so there's the, uh, the 5 p.m. hour Mountain Standard Time. Let's go to the morning tomorrow. So this is 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time Thursday. There's 5 p.m. Here's 5 a.m. on Friday, Mountain Standard Time, December 12th. There's a lunch hour. We're cruising towards the dinner hour right here, Mountain Time. Um, all right, last stop is going to be right here. This is 5 a.m. Mountain Standard Time on Saturday, December 13th. Uh, the trajectory is still up here, but there's a lot less precip. Now, at this point, we're waiting on the bigger storm system to come in around the 15th, 16th, 17th, and that's really the only chance of potentially bringing that storm track further to the south, because what do we need? We need a buckling of the jet stream. So that's all on the table eventually, but it's just it's a long wait for that to happen. A quick look at the time height forecast uh, over the next three days. You start here. Um, that's the current time you move in this direction. Um, let me draw that on into the future. At Loveland Skier in Colorado, you're looking through the vertical atmosphere. Your moisture in green here is mainly today through about the lunch hour. And then it kind of trickles into the afternoon, but much drier after tonight. Drier um, all the way through the 12th and the 13th. So what we have is just some leftover wind and snow on the northwest wind uh, for the first half of today. With maybe another inch. Um, here's the forecast pressure anomaly. So this is uh, effective on Thursday, 12-11. Your lower than normal pressures are out here. Higher than normal pressures are all across the west. And here's your, battle, your battleground right here. That's where the rich flow is coming in, right on the northern side of that high pressure abutted against this area, these lower pressures up here. Um, okay, next one is 12-13, your pressure anomalies. Higher than normal pressures across the west lower than normal pressures, cold with series of clippers moving through the Great Lakes in the Northeast. And the final one here, this is 1217. Look at the dip right here, the lower than normal pressures finally potentially moving in here to the west. So we'll see if that, if that actually holds together and that becomes a thing uh, by 12, 15, 16, and 17. Looking at total pre, actually, you know what, let me show you the, uh, this is the water vapor, uh, integrated vapor transport here. This is how we kind of look for the atmospheric river. So what's left of it today, and then it's gone late 11, 12, 13, 14, and then there's another little surge. This is for the Pacific Northwest, effective up there at those latitudes, about 45 degrees north, 46 degrees north. Another surge right there around 15, 16 with that next storm system. Um, looking at total precipitation here, over the next five days, as if everything fell as rain, I mean, you've still got a couple pockets up here in the Pacific Northwest of potentially 10 inches, five to 10 inches of liquid. And just the trajectory of this just keeps shooting it into the Pacific Northwest, uh, up into Montana, Idaho, the Pacific Northwest. And what you see kind of dragging its way south into uh, California happens very late on the 15th, 16th, 17th. Um, let me show you, uh, this is a 10 to 1 snow forecast, as if everything was, you know, as if you were getting snow out of this. A deep purple is going to be your at least 6 inch line. The bright pinks would be at least a foot. And these whites, where you see these whites, that's a couple of feet of accumulation. But I'll tell you, even in those areas, it's at very high elevations. I mean, what this warm air is doing with this atmospheric river is just completely wiping out. Um, snow potential for most ski areas. It's, it's eating it up. We're raining on snow. It's a rain on snow event, rain on snowpack. Um, here's my official snow forecast by the close totals by the close of business on 1215. For most places, it's absolutely nothing. The Wasatch, it's nothing. For most of Colorado, it's nothing. I mean, some of this, these one inch amounts, that's the Northwest flow. Uh, I've got a, a big one inch up here in parts of the Tetons, uh, maybe up to six up there in Whitefish, but most of these numbers, even through Idaho, because of the warm air, very low. I mean, I'm taking like 90 to 95% and I'm shaving these numbers down. 
So there's a big shaving effect because of this warm air. Now up here on higher on Baker, of course Rainier, I mean, is, is going to end up with triple digits, uh, 100 inches or more out of this. But Blackcomb, Whistler, Blackcomb, Baker, you could still see two, two or three feet at the very highest of elevation, 6 to 12 inches up here through Sunshine, Norquay, Marmot Basin, Revelstoke, and Kicking Horse. So the good times continue up there. Uh, looking at the northeast, snow accumulation, rolling snow accumulation, uh, deep purple is at least six, bright pink is at least 12. And so there are some places coming off of Lake Ontario, um, Erie, and Michigan that go six to 12. Otherwise, there's a lot of places that go kind of like two to six. In fact, here's my my uh, snow forecast, grand totals by the end of 1215, lots of twos, threes, and fours up here through the interior, maybe up to five J Peak, Treblant, four or five Whiteface, Mount Washington, and Snow Ridge. All right, guys, we're going to end on the big western map here. Totals through 1215 by the end of uh, business on 1215. Um, just, again, very tricky, shaving down the numbers because of the warm air in this rich atmospheric river flow and everything's really northern Rockies. Guys, I appreciate you taking uh, the time to watch these videos. Take care and have a great day.